Hello, everyone. We're excited to welcome you to episode five of the series, Kickstart VMware Cloud Foundation Projects. I'm Satya Sresta, a senior staff executive solutions architect at VMware. And today, I'm once again joined by my colleague, Vincent Han, as we dive deeper into exploring Kubernetes within the realm of PCR. It's good to have you, Vincent, with us. Hi, Satya. Thanks for welcoming me back. Excellent. So building upon our previous conversations and talking about TKGS and VM service in the last episode, today we will center our discussion on the mechanics of Tanju multi-zone supervisor cluster and supervisor services within VCF. So yeah, let's quickly recap where we are in the journey of this episode. So as you can see here highlighted in purple, multi-zone support and supervised services is what we are going to cover today. So Vincent, let's uh, dive straight into the topic of the day. Sure. So before we deep dive into today's topic, which is the multi-zone supervisor clusters, as well as the supervisor services, let's maybe recap again on what we mean by Kubernetes in and on VCF. So basically, it is one platform for all different kinds of workloads, right? whether is it virtual machines, whether is it TKG clusters, or the supervisor services that you run on top of the platform for your consumers to use, right? So your consumer could be in the form of uh, the apps owner, or it could be developers. When we say Kubernetes in VCF is basically meaning that there is Kubernetes API embedded into VCF. So you could create infrastructure using the Kubernetes API. So that's where the in actually comes from. Then we also talk about the on VCF, where you actually can create Kubernetes clusters, such as what we call the TKGS clusters, the Tanzu Kubernetes Grid service clusters. So this is where you can create on-demand upstream conformant Kubernetes clusters. So yeah, so there you have it, Kubernetes in and on VCF. So today we are looking at some of the architecture aspect of putting more resiliency on your supervisor clusters as well as your TKG clusters, and also you know providing more services for your consumers to consume. So let's dive into multi-zone support, Vincent. Yeah, sure. If you have seen our past video, most of our supervisors are actually created in a single cluster. Right, so three nodes supervisor VMs, they are hosted in one cluster itself. So, you know, in cases where you might want to increase the availability of your supervisor clusters by spreading the VMs to more than one cluster, you should, I mean, there is support in the platform itself enabling you to do that, right? We call it the multi-zone supervisor cluster support. Right. So in here, yeah, in here, you can see on the screen over here, there is actually three clusters, so vSphere cluster one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and we classify it in different zones. So zone one, zone two, zone three. So this is like very similar like availability zones. So, you know, you could be having maybe different clusters in different racks in your data center. So rack one is like a vSphere cluster by itself. You know, zone rack two is another cluster by itself. So you want to achieve, or you have the requirement to have rack resiliency, right? So that's where, you know, you create your cluster in that fashion. And therefore, your supervisor clusters can also be designed in that fashion where you can actually spread your supervisor cluster out. Likewise, if you look at the Tanzu Kubernetes clusters or the TKGS, they also have multiple replicas of control plane as well as the worker nodes, right? So in this case, you might want to also spread out the control plane and worker nodes mm -hmm. into different zones as well, right? achieving higher resiliency for your Kubernetes clusters. Right. So when you deploy your apps onto these clusters, the apps will also be distributed across multiple different worker nodes. And therefore, again, you have more resiliency for your application if you if you design your infrastructure in this manner. Right, right. So it's mainly for higher availability and resiliency of your applications, right? Yep, correct, exactly. How does the performance come into play here when we are spreading our applications and control planes and worker nodes in this fashion? How will the performance get impacted? Yeah, I think definitely you have more performance, right? I mean, more clusters, more hosts. Definitely you have more resources for your supervisor cluster as well as your TKC, the right. Kubernetes clusters, yeah. Got it, okay. Okay, so why don't we just take a look at the demo? Yeah, sure. So. I'm in the workload management in vCenter. So you can see that I have this supervisor cluster over here. So this is slightly different. Uh, this is a multi-zone setup. So when you create your supervisor clusters, you can actually choose over here, right? You can see that there is this cluster deployment. So this, yeah. is, this cluster deployment is what I have been using in the past videos, right? One clusters and then all my supervisor VMs in that cluster itself. 
Mm -hmm. So you have this option of called vSphere zones deployment. This is where you can actually say which clusters you want to have the supervisor cluster on. So you can see over here, you can select your vSphere zones, one or three vSphere zones, mm -hmm. right? So if you want a cluster level high ability, select three zones. So there's no more zones over here because I have all used up um, the zones, but I can actually show you the vSphere zones, right? So, so you can see over here, I have mapped out different zones. I call it uh, AZ1 to 3. And then you can see that each AZ itself, it's a cluster. So in each cluster, you can see over here, I have two hosts, right? In my, in my setup, I actually have two hosts over here, <laughs> right? So once you select the vSphere zones, you also need to select a storage policies that is what we call a zone-based um, storage policy. So let me show it to you. So basically we need to look at, um, so you, you actually need the storage policies for the multi-zone supervisor cluster, but it's a different one, right? You need to select a zone-based storage policies. So I'm going to show you over here. So this is this Tanzu storage policy is what we usually use, but I create a multi-zone one. So if you look at this, uh -huh. it says that this is a zonal base. You right. so actually need to use this for your supervisor clusters as well as your TKC clusters. Right? So, mm -hmm. so this is required over here. So you this is required for your multi-zone setup. So you need to set up a, a different storage uh, policies. Okay. And so you can see over here. So it's running on six hosts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so to show you that the supervisor clusters are actually spread up, uh, let me go into the host and cluster view. So you can see that I have three clusters, cluster one, two, and three. Each of them has two hosts. And yep. you can see that, let's take a look in the supervisor control plane. You can see that normally, you know, it will be all in one clusters, but now you can see that each cluster has its own supervisor control plane, right? It's been spread it out in right. three, yeah, three clusters itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's the control plane. When you create the TKC clusters, same thing. You can actually define how you want your TKC clusters to be. Right. Okay, so yeah. So there is this node pool concept, uh, which mm -hmm. I will show you in the um, CI later. But you can see that same thing. Your control plane is also spread it out. Okay. Yeah. And then your worker node is also spread it out as well. Namespace is also so when you create that namespace, does it automatically populate on? All those clusters. If it's yeah, yeah. When you when you create a namespace, it will automatically be created across multiple clusters. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. okay let's log into the supervisor clusters so that I can actually show you the control plane. Right. So now I'm logging on, and let me get the notes. So you can see this is the this is the auto control plane. Okay. Right. So the the difference over here that you can see that it doesn't has the EXXI as the worker notes. So right. this is the difference here when you compare it to a single cluster, supervisor clusters. Mm -hmm. So this also means that, you know, you can't use supervisor services, which I'm going to talk about later on, on the right. multi zone cluster, because, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at the supervisor services, they are actually spun up as vSphere ports, which is hosting natively on the hypervisor or the EXSI itself. Right? So right. that explains why you can't run supervisor services on the multi zone. So do take note of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let me log on to the TKC clusters. Yep. All right, so if you take a look at this, you can see that um, I have three control plane and also three worker nodes, right? Right. All right, so how do you actually create these clusters? Mm -hmm. So maybe I show you the YAML file. So very similar, like the single zone clusters. So you need to have your name, namespace, but on the topology side, you can see that you know you have you can specify the replica of your control plane, mm -hmm. but now you actually need to specify a zone-based storage policy, right? Mm -hmm. This is what I've shown you previously. Right. And then you have this what we call the failure domain concept, where you mm -hmm. need to specify the vSphere zones that you have created. Yeah. So AZ1, AZ2, right? And then you have your, your AZ3 over here. Yeah. That's why your worker nodes are being distributed into three. Failure domain or these zones. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So again, I have already created some application on it, right? So three nodes itself, and you can see that you know um, I have three replica and Kubernetes basically just spread itself into different worker nodes. So again, right? Because we have designed the data center in this manner, and mm -hmm. that's where you you know by having multiple vSphere clusters, by having your TKC across this clusters, then your application will also be distributed across these multiple clusters, right? Letting right. you having racks resiliencies or cluster resiliencies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So that means even if one cluster dies, the other will continually run, right? So that is the high availability we're talking about. Exactly. Yep. Cool. Yep. So that's it. Um, hopefully you get a better understanding of multi-zone supervisor clusters, as well as TKC and your applications running on it. Fantastic demo, Vincent. That was good. Now Thank let's you. dive deep into the second topic of the day. Uh, that is Tonzu Supervisor Services. So let's take a look at the supervisor services. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you look at supervisor services, these are curated services that VMA has provided uh, for the VI admin. So this would be like, for example, you know, S3 object storage, layer 7 ingress, mm -hmm. uh, registry, container registry, you know, backup recovery capabilities, cert management. So these are the curated services. And we're going to show you what are the list of services that's been curated. So the VI admin can you know, extend the, the platform with all these different capabilities for the mm -hmm. consumer to consume, right? So this can be consumed via the um, the CCI interface or using the CLI, right? Yeah. And all these services are available straight away within Tonzu itself, right? You still need to install it. So there is, um, you know, I will show you later on in the demo, there's a URL where all these services are being um, listed there and you know some of it is already kind of like GA some of that is still in the experimental phase you could actually try it out the services and then before it goes to GA yeah got it yep so these are all the curated services already so for example Valero so this is a backup and restore uh, capability for your applications okay and then you have the cert manager it helps you to manage the certificates in your clusters mm -hmm. Hubble it's basically the open source container registry, mm -hmm. okay? Then you have Contour. Contour is a layer seven providing ingress for your Kubernetes clusters. Yeah. Thus, which is the external DNS, basically mm -hmm. helps you to manage the DNS for your workloads, yeah. Yeah. So let me show you on the supervisor services. Mm -hmm. So you can see over here, again, under workload management. So I already have a supervisor clusters uh, spun up, right? And, you know, if you hop on to, hop on to this services tab, um, you can see that these are all the supervisor services that is available for the consumer to consume. So this is where you can click on this URL if you're if you have an internet connection, yep. right? So it will bring you to this uh, GitHub page where it shows you this list of services uh, that's been curated. Okay, right. so we can see that some of the services that I have mentioned already, like backup and restore, certificate, mm -hmm. uh, ingress, external DNS, for example. Okay, mm -hmm. so these are the so-called curated ones. Then we have some that is still, you know, in experimental phase, right? For example, the Argo CD, mm. uh, Redis operator, Grafana operator. Yeah. So who maintains that GitHub page and updates the page with the new versions? Yeah, it's the it's the product managers in charge of the yeah. Now now it's called vSphere IAS, right? So right. they changed the name of the runtime. So this mm. there's a team of PMs that's actually managing all the supervisor services. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So. Basically, our customers can just go there in this page and see what's available and then download it and then use whatever is appropriate for them, right? Correct. Yeah. Cool. And there's also this catalog to show that, you know, because, I mean, supervisor services has been there in VSP 7 as well, like 8. So we can see that over here, some yeah. services actually support on 7, some need to be on 8. Right? Mm -hmm. So, it, for example, this, even if we look at this TKG service, this is uh, one of the latest services that we have. Yes. Uh, basically, you know, I'm thinking of doing another session to talk about this uh, TKG 3.0, you can decouple the TKG service from your vCenter. So when you upgrade, you, you do not need to upgrade your vCenter if you want to have a more later version of Kubernetes. Yeah, so it's properly decoupled now, right? Yeah. Correct, cool. right. yes. Yeah, cool. It would be good to see that as a bonus episode, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. To install, I'm going to show you how to install the services. So most of this um, services actually comes with a YAML file. Right, so yeah. there you go. So you download the you download this YAML file. Yeah, I already have Hubble installed, so I'm not going to show you Hubble. But maybe yeah. I'm going to show you the um, the Grafana, right? Yeah, you can see that there's this Grafana. So I have yeah. downloaded the operator already, right? Yeah. Just click on this link, you can download the operator. Right, this, this is how the operator looks like. Yeah. So what you need to do is go on your services tab. You just mm -hmm. add, okay, and it says that okay, you need a service def definition YAML file, right? Yeah, this is how it looks like. So you have the Grafana operator over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I already have this, by the way. So that's why you're showing that um, some warning messages. Yep. So 
yeah, you click on finish, then you can go see there's this Grafana operator over here. Right. You can actually install on the supervisors, right, mm -hmm. clusters. If there's a new version, you can also download from the GitHub and actually add a new version into the services. And then right. you can actually yeah, manage different versions of different supervisor clusters and things like that. Mm -hmm. So can you actually show us how it actually looks in the vCenter console? Yeah, sure. So for example, this service over here, right? All you need is just choose the install supervisor and you choose the supervisor that you want to install. So once it's installed, it will be deployed as vSphere ports. So you log on to the, click on the host and clusters. So you can see that the supervisor services, one services that you installed, they will cre actually create, uh, sorry, for each of the services that you create or install, you, they will create a namespaces. Right. Like you see over here. Yeah. Then they will have all the vSphere ports related to these services being spun up. Yeah. So that is for CCI. Yes. Yeah, so this is for the CCI service. So this is an orchestrator for integrating the TKGS service to the ARIA platform. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is the service for it. And then you have the contour, contour mm -hmm. provides ingress. And yeah. you can see that yeah, these are all the vSphere ports for it. Yeah. And you also have the harbor, which is the uh, registry. Yeah. So all these are the services uh, or the, the vSphere ports that's providing services uh, for harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Really neatly integrated. It looks really great, man. Sure. Yeah. So that's it. I think today is going to be a short video just talking about multi zone as well as supervisor services. I think in our next series, we're going to talk about ARIA integration as well as the CCI interface. That's awesome, man. So it looks like that's all we have for today. Yeah. And share the demos and all the cool stuff that you showed us today. Uh, on the next episode, we'll be talking about the CCI, Cloud Consumption Interface, and ARIA integration, which will be potentially the last episode for us. And appreciate all the demos and all the content here, Vincent. Really appreciate that. No worries. Yeah, and for all the viewers, a big thank you to staying until the end with us. And we'll see you next time again. See you. See you. Bye. Bye.